welcome to the Bold Top by Joe podcast, coming straight to you from the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, your society and culture podcast. And now, let's welcome your host, Joe. Hello, peeps. Welcome back to the show. Welcome to Bold Talk by Joe podcast. Hopefully, everybody is doing great. This episode is dedicated to Big Brother from the Big Brother Advice podcast. We were guests on Willie's podcast, The Thing About Us podcast, and he has a separate segment called The Pull Up. He usually has his podcast with his wife, Fiana, and they have a relationship uh, advice podcast. But Willie does his own thing once in a while, and he invites us over. It's J. Dot from What Is TWS podcast, his big brother from Big Brother Advice podcast, and myself. And he has all kinds of questions lined up for us, right? And we have a great conversation every time we're on the show. One of the questions was, what is our guilty pleasure? What is one of our guilty pleasures? So I responded with, sneakers, buying Jordans is my guilty pleasure. So Big Brother started laughing. And he's like, Joe, I want to see your shoes, man. I want to see your shoes. So a couple of weeks later, I recorded an episode with the shoes that I have left. And I send them a video and we laughed and we talked about it. And Big Brother's all like, hey, man, you should have this on. You should you should make this into an episode. And I'm like, yeah, I, know, I am. I am. So I have recorded an episode on basketball shoes and the culture a long time ago, but it didn't come out good. The story was not was not that good and the audio was horrible. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to scratch it. But after talking to Big Brother recently, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and, and record a new episode and tell you all how my how this became a guilty pleasure. So it all started when I was a kid. And when I grew up in the Jordan era, and of course, Jordan is one of the greatest basketball players of all time. And I've always wanted to get Air Jordans, but we lived in Mexico. So my parents couldn't afford to buy me Jordans. They were expensive. So my dad's brother decided to buy me some Jordans on one of my birthdays. So I was like, wow, I was so excited. I was, I was like, man, I can't believe I finally got some Air Jordans. But I grew, I grew out of them fast, right? And I kept asking for some Jordans, right? And I was like, oh, can I get some Jordans? Can I get some Jordans? And my parents are like, no, you, you can't. We can't afford to get you those shoes. So I am a big basketball enthusiast. I love basketball. I played basketball. I, I played organized basketball since I was a kid all the way to high school, out of high school into my late 20s. I played in uh, different basketball competitions, uh, Sprite competition, Coca-Cola competition, city leagues, church leagues, um, you know, just radio station tournaments, all this stuff. Basketball was my life, right? My dream as a child was to be a basketball player. So every time we were in practice or we were going to go play a game in school, um, you know, everybody, all my teammates had Jordans. And uh, I had shitty shoes, right? Just shitty shoes. And again, no, I don't want to disrespect my parents because they worked hard to, to buy me what they could afford, right? But some of those shoes were not made to play in the asphalt and play inside in, inside a gym. So I was uh, having a hard time with them, and, and my friends were laughing at me and all kinds of stuff. So finally, my mom said, okay, we're going to finally buy you some basketball shoes, some good shoes. So they took me to the store, and I was like, yes, they're going to buy me some Jordans. And we got to the store, and they're like, okay, here we go. And uh, no Jordans. I was like, oh, no. So but you can get these pairs from right here because, you know, my mom was looking at the price tags. And then she's like, you can get either this shoe or this shoe. And I was like, oh, no. So the shoe that she ended up buying me was a Reebok Sean Kemp shoe. Yes, I was wearing the enemy's shoes because the Seattle Supersonics were the Chicago Bulls enemies. And I was like, oh, I don't want Sean Kemp shoes. However, I ended up getting those shoes because they were basketball shoes. They were well-made. And, uh, you know, I, I was tired of playing with Kmart shoes where 
the bottom of the sole will fall off every time you play it outside in the asphalt. It'll just like the stitching or the glue and then the bottom of the shoe will fall off. So I was like, I'll take the Sean Kemp shoe. So I show up to the game with a fresh pair of Sean Kemp's and everybody looks at me and goes, really? You're a Jordan fan and you're wearing Sean Kemp shoes? And I was like, hey man, this is all my parents could afford. So um, I played with those shoes for the remaining of my uh, my remaining of my career, my basketball career in high school. <laughs> and uh, because we, we couldn't afford any more, any more shoes. But, uh, you know, I, I am very appreciative of my parents uh, that they were able to finally get me a pair of legit, uh, what I call legit basketball shoes, something that I could use that could withstand playing basketball all the time. Right. And uh, so, so I was happy about that, right? I was happy, but I couldn't get the Jordans, right? So I said to myself, one day when I grow up, I'm going to get the shoes that I could never get when I was a child. And that is when the downfall began. So my best friend lives in Chicago. I lived in Chicago for quite some time. And uh, he's a big time sneakerhead. All we did was play basketball, talk about shoes, talk about rap, talk about all kinds of stuff. That's us. That was our main topics. And uh, he's a big-time reseller. So he likes to buy and resell shoes. So he's like, hey, you should get into reselling Jordans. And I was like, oh, man. I'm like, you know what? I'll think about it. So one day he asked, hey, you want me? You want to you wanna buy these from me? And I was like, what, what, is, what are you selling? So he's like, I'm selling you these shoes. But you can't sell them and you can't trade them. You can't do nothing with them. You have to keep them. So I was like, okay, what you got? He gave me, he sold me my first pair of Jordan 1s. And uh, I was super excited. Uh, obviously, he gave me a, a sweet deal on those shoes because, you know, they're they're worth a lot of money. And uh, I still have those shoes. I wear those occasionally, uh, once in a while. They're, that is my favorite shoe. It's uh, memories, obviously, of, of uh, when I was a child, a shoe that I couldn't get. And memories of my best friend, uh, that uh, I will always, I will always cherish that and our friendship, and uh, so that's where it started, right? So then I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna start getting some shoes and try to resell them because reselling shoes, especially Jordans, go for a lot of money. So you can't just go and buy these shoes at the store anymore like you used to, because people used to fight, they used to stab each other, they used to rob you, so they stopped all that. You used to be able to sleep outside the store and wait till the doors open and run in there and try to get shit like it was Black Friday, right? Well, they stopped. Nike came out with this thing called Sneakers App. So basically, they tell you what shoes are coming out. You enter your information. It tells you what time you have to go in there, log in, and then enter your submission. And if you get picked, right, for a draw or anything like that, if you get picked, you can buy the shoe. However, resellers are using bots. They're using thousands and thousands of bots. Using a, They're just stuffing them with submissions that they get all the shoes and you get nothing, right? You get nothing. So that's a huge problem in the, in the reselling uh, shoe business. Also, retail stores, uh, shoe stores, they, they also get some Jordans, right, on uh, when when. When these exclusive Jordans, when they're, when they're uh, like at the same time that the app goes live, right? The the store already has those shoes. They have a limited amount of quantities in the store, so you just can't go buy them. You also have to go to their website. You have to sign up, and then if you win, uh, if you win a spot, they send you an email saying you want a spot. You have this. You have a certain amount of time to get to the store and buy these shoes. If you don't get there in time, you lose your place and you don't have the shoes. The problem with that is, is that retail stores, there's resellers that are paying money or they know people there or they get their friends to work there and the shoes are going through the back door. So by the time you even try, they're all gone. It just says you weren't picked, you weren't picked, you weren't picked. But the shoes are gone. They're in somebody's truck. They're already on the website going for $600 more and you get no shoes. So it's tough for somebody that just wants to get a pair of Jordans. And they just kind of want to buy that one pair. They don't want to sell them. They don't want to do it. They just want to buy that pair. It's impossible for you to get them anymore. And it's not all Jordans because Jordan makes all kinds of shoes. It's the old Jordans, the OG Jordans with the old colorways, right? And especially collaborations. For instance, Travis Scott uh, collaborates with the Jordan brand and they have a shoe, 
right? The Travis Scott shoe. And he has his own website, Cactus Jacks, and you can go on there. And uh, you can also put your information in. If they send you an email, you win the shoe, right? You get to buy the shoe. You have a certain amount of time to buy it. And these shoes go for like 180, 190, but they resell for a crazy amounts of money. I mean, thousands of money. There are shoes that are worth thousands of money, like the Mark Wahlberg shoe is worth thousands and thousands and thousands of money, 100,000, 50,000, you know, just 10,000, 5,000. I mean, these shoes go for crazy amounts of money. So these resellers are trying to get their hands on all the shoes so they can resell them. Obviously, if you buy them for two, 300 bucks and you sell them for 10,000, you make a lot of money, right? And they buy them in all different sizes. It's not just your size. So what I started doing is I started buying them in my size because I'm like, well, if I can't sell them or the price goes down or I'm just like, I feel like I like them, I'm just going to keep them. So I started or I started going for all the size 12s because they're they're not very common. But at the same time, a lot of people buy smaller sizes, right? Nine and a half, ten and a half. So I was like, I'm just going to get my size. The problem with that is on my size, there's not a whole lot of shoes. There's like I said, there's per size certain amount of shoes that are released to the United States. And those smaller sizes are more common. There's more of them. But I'm like, shit, if I can't sell these or I don't like them, I can't wear them. So I started buying them in my size. So that even makes it even harder to get a shoe when you have a when you have a size like that, right? So it's like, damn, that sucks. I wish I was like a 10 and a half and I would have more of an option to get more shoes. So it makes it it makes it really, really hard. So I finally won a pair of shoes. And there were Air Jordan 4s. North Carolina blue and uh, they were beautiful so I'm like okay I'm gonna try to sell these shoes I made an account I, there's an account that you, there's different places you can sell them for instance you can sell them at uh, it's called goat you can sell them on uh, this other one called StockX and all that so you send these shoes in they authenticate the shoes and then they send them to the buyer right the problem is is they charge you fees so I was like you know what I'm gonna sell these shoes see how I do so I bought them for hundred and seventy five dollars right retail price and I ended up selling them for almost 600 so I made pretty good money even after all the fees so I'm like you know what I'm gonna jump into this business so I jumped into the reselling business and I only wanted to resell Air Jordans that's it I didn't want to sell Kanye's shoes I didn't want to sell any of that just Air Jordans so my goal now was to try to get as many exclusive Jordan shoes as I could so I can make some money the problem is is that you would never win. I would never win. And the other problem is that when I won, I never wanted to sell them. I wanted to keep them because it's, I was like, man, I want these shoes so bad. I'm never, ever going to be able to get these shoes ever in my life. And I always wanted the shoes. And what happens? The nostalgia hits. The, oh, my God, I remember when I was a kid. And you get stuck with the shoes. You don't sell them. So I ended up taking out a credit card just to resell shoes, right? Well, the problem with that is, is I maxed out the credit card. I was buying shoes, but I wasn't selling the shoes because I was keeping the shoes. So my wife finally says, said to me, that's enough. No more. Because I got into credit card debt for the damn shoes, right? And I wasn't selling anything. So she said, that is enough. No more. Get rid of the damn shoes and just keep some, but get rid of whatever else. So I started selling all the rest of the shoes and I didn't make a whole lot of money on them. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep the ones that I want. So I ended up with like six pairs of Jordans. And I know there's, that's two, that's one too many pairs. I know that there's people out there that cannot afford to buy not even one pair. I know that. That is selfish. I know that. But it's the thing of when you grow up with that you can't get these shoes. You know, you when you're older, you're like, man, like I want to have these shoes. It's just like anything else, video games and all that stuff. Oh, I never had the Nintendo. I, I always want to get a Nintendo. So it's the same thing, right? And you remember when you were a child and when you were at in that place in time. So to me, it's very hard. It was very hard to let go of these shoes that I had in my hand. It was very hard to sell them. And it's just, it was very hard to wear them. And uh, so I was like, man, this is getting, I'm getting into trouble with money. So I stopped the whole reselling. I sold whatever I, whatever I could. And uh, now I wear all my shoes. I wear them for special occasions. Uh, it's either for a wedding or for a birthday or for an anniversary. I have, you know, a few shoes that I wear. And uh, that's it. You know, those shoes are going to last me forever because I never, I hardly ever wear them. So 
that's what I have left. And like I said, it, it was an obsession. It's a guilty pleasure that became an obsession for me. And uh, they got me they got me into trouble, right? Got me into, into big trouble. And trying to sell all these things, uh, for instance, on these other sites that there is to sell stuff, right? It's very hard because people want to haggle the price. People want to trade you tires. They want to trade you kitchen supplies. And it's like, dude, I don't want your fucking spatulas. I want the money. I don't want your tires. I don't want your rims. I want the money. So it, it's just hard because you have to deal with all these people sending you messages and would you do this? Would you trade this shoe for this shoe? Would you do that for this? And it's like, no, I am not going to trade the shoes. I want the cash. I'm trying to just get rid of these damn shoes. And some of these shoes I was selling on my retail price, right? Just get them the hell out of here. I don't care. I just, as long as I just get what I paid for them, that's all I want. And uh, But it was just a hassle, right? And you don't know if you're going to get jumped. If we were going to get stabbed or anything. So I would tell him, yeah, I'll meet you at the police station down here. Oh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll meet over here. I'm like, nope, I have the shoes. I'll meet you here if you want them. And they'll never respond. Because why? Because sometimes these shoes to a lot of people are very valuable. That they're willing to rob you for these shoes. So it's just too much of a hassle. I feel like you're fucking trading goats at a freaking market in the Middle East, right? And it's like, no, I am not. I don't want your fucking goats. I want the cash. So it just got to be very annoying. My uh, my guilty pleasure, my obsession became too much that in the end, it just gave me more of a headache to even try to sell shoes. I didn't have no contacts. I didn't have anybody in the reselling business that I could talk to besides my buddy, but he's in Chicago and he has a hard time himself. So it's like, I don't know anybody. And I tried to reach out to some resellers and they're like, we're not going to give you shit. Pay me $100 and I'll, and I'll tell you a secret. And it's like, hell no, you're not going to scam me. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are scam artists, and they're not going to let you go into their uh, to their honeypot, right? They're, that's how they're making their money, and it's understandable. You know, it's all good, but uh, I decided to quit the reselling business. I wasn't good at it. Um, you know, I just, uh, like I said, it just gave me more of a headache than anything else. Uh, but a shoe to me, to end the show, a shoe to me, the Jordan shoe, is not just a shoe. I know for some people that are not sneakerheads, they don't understand that. They just feel like it's just this Jordan shoe. It's overpriced. It's bullshit. It's made, you know, in China or wherever they make them now. To me, it's part of culture. To me, it's part of my culture, it's basketball culture, sports culture, music culture. That shoe is, doesn't just resemble Michael Jordan. That shoe resembles the culture. And anywhere you go, you see that Jumpman logo. Anywhere in this world, they'll, they'll, they will know exactly who that is. That is Michael Jordan. That is Air Jordan. Everybody will know that. And like I said, it's it's part of it's part of us, right? It's part of a, a generation. It's part of our culture now. It, music videos and sports anchors wear them. Grandpas wear them. Everybody wears them. You know, women, men, children, everybody, everybody wears Air Jordans. I've seen basketball. I've seen uh, school principals wearing Jordans. I mean, it, it's they're everywhere, right? Like I said. It's not just a shoe, it is a culture, and it's a beautiful one too. So, that being said, before I end the show, I uh, just want to let you guys know that uh, I have a, a video exclusive podcast through YouTube, okay, and it's, it's again, it's free, they are charging you for nothing, it's just, uh, it's just content that I will not be releasing on audio. So, if you want to check it out, go to uh, Bull Talk by Joe on YouTube. And uh, you have, I have different playlists. I have my playlist for just the audio podcast, and I have my playlist for video exclusive podcasts. And you can go on there and check me out. It's all video. And uh, I wanted to do that because uh, a lot of the, when you go to YouTube, I don't know if I said this before, but I'll say it again. When you go to YouTube, people expect to watch videos, they don't expect to listen to an audio podcast with just a screen that doesn't move. It's very hard. Even myself, if I want to listen to a podcast, I don't go to YouTube, I go to, Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Good Pods, right? If I want to see a video podcast, I go to YouTube. So I can tell that my views are not, they're not consistent uh, for my regular playlist uh, audio podcast. There, some of them get zero views or nothing. Only some, some of them get 20 views or so when the topic is interesting, you know, like artificial intelligence is very interesting right now to a lot of people. And uh, so I was like, you know what? 
I need to go to the video again. Like I said before, I used to do all video, but when I switched platforms from the Spotify platform that I was using to upload my stuff, and when I switched the platform, they took all my videos and they made them all into audios. So I got stuck with that, right? And that's why I'm like, my other avenue is to go to YouTube. And uh, I was like, you know what, I'm going to start doing them. So that uh, if you're listening to this episode, there'll be episode three will be up on YouTube already. Um, that Yeah, that'll be episode three. This episode right here that you're listening to now is episode number 99. Yes, 99. And I know what's weird is in some of my apps and some of my platforms like Apple Podcasts and stuff like that, the numbers are off. It says that I have 101. It says I have 94 on the other. It's not. I have 98, 99 episodes with this one right now. I deleted some episodes way, like, long ago. I deleted these epi- some episodes that were horrible. They're just, the audio was horrible. I just couldn't understand anything, so I took them off. And maybe those uh, those other platforms do not, they, not, they did not update, and the number just stayed the same, right? Because some of them, one of the other uh, platforms says I have 100 and something episodes, and I, I don't. So right now, I am currently sitting at 99 one hundredth episode is coming up. It is unbelievable. It is a great achievement for myself to continue to to podcast and have a, a hundred episodes. You all know, all you podcasters know that it's very hard. And all you do is fork out money when it comes to this uh, this endeavor that we do is podcasting. Um, but a hundred episodes is it's a big uh, achievement for me. Uh, something that it shows consistency. I kept going and I and I just I didn't quit, even though times are hard and you don't get a whole lot of listeners sometimes. And, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs and sometimes you struggle with content and, you know, all that stuff that a podcaster goes through. You know, I just I still stuck. I still stuck with it. And now the 100th episode is really, really near. That being said, I'm going to try to go live. So. I'm going to put out a thing if uh, you would want to join me on a live episode because I don't want to do a live episode and I have one viewer. That is just weird. So I'm going to be answering questions uh, of whatever you post on there. I'm going to give you a shout out every time you decide to join the conversation or send me a, a, a message through the live platform. Um, so it's going to be interactive. It's going to be great. I'm going to try to have Mofo with me on the show so we can uh, celebrate the 100th episode. Um, but again, I'm going to put out a, a little thing out there on all the social medias, uh, Instagram, Twitter, um, and also do a YouTube short saying that I'm going to be doing a live 100. And, uh, I want to see. I want to see who who's going to join me. Right, that way I know that there's going to be some people watching, more people watching the show, and uh, so so we can have fun, right? So we can interact, and at the same time, this is your opportunity to go on there and 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 get a shout out, right? And and hopefully there's a bunch of people listening, so I can shout you out and uh, briefly talk about your show and stuff like that, you know. And I don't know. I think it would be fun. I'm going to try to keep it a little bit under two hours. And, uh, and have some fun, right? Try to do it at a decent time. Maybe, you know, I know everybody is, not everybody's in the same time zone. So again, I'm going to try to make it to where it's uh, it works for some time zones, right? I know it's not going to work for everybody. And I know there's a lot of people that are busy. And that being said, I, I do want to thank everyone, everyone, all my supporters, all my listeners, all my friends that listen to this podcast. I want to thank you very much for taking time out of your lives to listen to my show. I know we're all busy. I know that there's more important things than to listen to my shit, to listen to my show, but some of you still do it, and I want to give you thanks for that. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. On to 100. Until next time, peace. Thanks Thanks for for checking checking out Bold Bold Talk by by Joe Joe Podcast. We want to thank all our listeners and supporters around the world. You can listen to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at Bold Talk by Joe and on Instagram at Bold Talk by Joe. 